So in the last tutorial, we programmed this little M5 stack here to communicate with our LND node, specifically a Blitz. Um, so you could request an invoice, display an invoice. Then when we pay the, pay the invoice, it turns on that little blue relay there. And then, um, so if I pay that invoice now, there we go, hit pay, it's paying, and then paid. And then once the invoice pays, it turns on the Jacob's ladder. There we are. I think maybe the distance between my diodes isn't quite small enough for the arcs to jump. That seems to be working fine now. Pretty scary stuff, 4,000 volts. Um, the difference between that tutorial and this tutorial is this one is using the OpenNode API instead. So if you haven't got a, a full node set up, you can use the excellent online service OpenNode. It's free to sign up. There's a link in the description. Uh, sign up, um, uh, request an API key for generating invoices, um, and then we can build uh, we can build this project. So we're just going to dive in and start building it now. As with all the tutorials I do, um, the uh, repo is on the GitHub, on the ArtBTC GitHub. In the last tutorial, we looked at running the M5 State 1.21 on a Blitz, so a full LND implementation. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the excellent online service uh, OpenNode. Um, which you can easily go and open an account on. Um, there's details here in the GitHub. Uh, here we are, so you can you can you can join OpenNode there. Once you've joined and set up an account, you can log in. Um, and then if you go to settings, I believe, and integrations, uh, set up. With, okay, so you need to enable two. Th factor authentication. Once you've enabled two-factor authentication, you can then start generating API keys. It works pretty much like a um, uh, L and D node in which you've, you've, you've got three API keys. You've got a, a read API key and then you've got a invoice API key and then you've got like an admin API key, like a withdraw API key. You just need the invoice API key on this project. Um, so where are we? Here we are. <laughs> um, so yeah, once you've done that, I'm going to cover some of the stuff I've covered in the last tutorial, assuming that you didn't do the last tutorial because you're you haven't got a node, that's why you're running this tutorial. Uh, so there's details here on how to wire up the, the relay with the M5 stack. There's also information about where you can buy the M5 stack and buy the relay. So get the M5 stack from AliExpress, about $30. It takes a little while to come, but then you know once it comes, it's uh, it's great. You can add uh, additional little modules onto it as well, uh, which we're gonna be exploring in, in future tutorials. There's also information about the relays you need. So I'm um, um, for the Jacob's Ladder implementation, I've used this little five volt relay. Um, and there's actually 24 volts running through it when the relay's turned on. I'm not sure if that would be very sustainable long term, but for short term, it seems to work all right. Uh, when it comes to relays, uh, you can pretty much attach a whole host of relays to your M5 stack. Um, so you could have, a, you know, someone make a payment and then turn on like lights in your house or something, for example, using relays. Obviously, if you're dealing with bigger voltages, then do be very, very careful um, um, and make sure you do, do your research. Um, or you could just use a smaller relay for like, say, um, well, like the implementation I used in San Francisco, which was for the arcade machines. I just used these little five volt uh, relays. They were absolutely fine. Um, there's also information about uh, installing the Arduino IDE. So you can do that for Mac, Windows, Linux. Um, run a couple of test projects. Um, uh, so download and install the M5 stack, you know, Google and YouTube how to do that and then run a couple of the example projects to get the M5 stack to do some stuff uh, if you can before moving on to this. Um, you'll also need to install the ESP32 uh, hardware into the Arduino IDE, um, which if you go to, here we are, so there's a link here to their, to their GitHub um, and uh, there's a very simple way of installing the SP32 boards into your Arduino IDE just by using this little um, this this link here and putting in your preferences in the Arduino IDE. Um, so it's literally, you know, where is it? Preferences. And then you just drop that link in there, I think, and then it installs all the boards. And then if you go to your board manager, you've not only had got all the Arduino boards available, then you've got all the SP32 boards available. Uh, the one we're using is the M5 stack core ESP32. Um, uh, if we, I'm lost now, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, I'll go back. Um, if we go into uh, M5 stack 121, so what you want to do is you want to download this whole project file um, and then uh, pull this folder 
um, once you've downloaded it, into your sketchbook. So somewhere your Arduino ID would have saved a folder called sketchbook, and that's where your sketches go. Pull that uh, folder into it, um, and then open it up. So you open up this file here, and then it should open your Arduino IDE, and the, it should have an extra little tab here for the image uh, file, which is um, which is this file here, okay? Uh, so that's just like a little splash screen when you first turn on the M5 stack. Um, there's a couple of libraries you'll need to install. You'll need to install, obviously, the M5 stack library, the Arduino JSON library, and the little VGL library. Uh, this library here, the Wi-Fi Client Secure library, that's included in the SP32 stuff, so you don't need to install that. Um, so you can install these from uh, uh, Sketch, include library, manage libraries, and then de dum de dum de dum If I type in M5 stack, M5 stack by M5 stack, you want to install that. And, oh, sorry. You want to install Arduino JSON. There we are, by Benoit. And what was the other one? A little VGL, LVGL. Little VGL, install that one too. So they need to be libraries you need to install. You need your Wi-Fi credentials. Obviously, this M5 stack can connect to the internet. And then you um, need your OpenNode API key. So this is an invoice. API key, invoice, I should really write that in there, API key, uh, a description for those invoices, you can put whatever you want in there. Um, there's a couple of other variables here, so let's look through it. So in any uh, Arduino project, you've got the setup function, which it runs first, then you've got the main loop, which it runs and loops around. So the first thing we do is we turn on the M5 stack, then we draw the splash screen, connect to the Wi-Fi, um, they don't need to be there. <laughs> We uh, tell pin 21 uh, to be an output pin. Um, so if we look at our, there we go. Um, if we look at these pictures here and how to wire up, um, there's three pins you need to connect to. This is a three volt pin, this is a ground pin, and then this is, it's labeled as SDA on the M5 stack, but it's actually pin 21, uh, connected to pin 21 on the internal ESP32. Um, so we're going to say pin 21, we want you to be an output, and then when we send a high to that output, it will turn the little relay on. If we send a low, it will turn the relay um, off. Um, then it runs the actual main loop. First thing it does is it runs a function called fetch payment. So all I get and post requests to open node are here. It's pretty simple. There's only two functions. Um, there's the fetch payment, so it goes and fetches an invoice, and then the check payment just checks if the invoice has been paid. So we fetch the payment. Um, it returns a variable, uh, which is the payment request, um, variable, which is the, the, the invoice. Uh, we turn that invoice into a constant SHA, so we can display it as a QR code. Um, M5 has a, a nice little built-in function for displaying QR codes, which saves us a lot of time. Then we run a function called the, the function check payment, so that's this function here. Uh, the first function, um, fetch, pay, fetch payment, is a post request, and then the next function is a get request. Uh, when you go on a web browser and use your web browser on your computer, it's doing loads of get and post requests, but you just don't see the details of them. With our Arduino stuff, we need to you know, declare the details ourselves. So uh, in the post request, uh, we have the information we want to post, which is the amount. So that's that variable up there somewhere. Where are you? Um, one, <laughs> one Satoshi, we could change that to 100. Um, and then the description, which was blah. And then for open node, we're saying hints, root hints, false. So that makes the QR a little bit easier to display. And then we send our post request. Um, we have our API key in the header and then some other like things which are kind of good manners when you're connecting to a server. And then it returns that data for us. In the get request, we just, um, what do we do? We use the, where are we? So the check payment data ID, we use the data ID um, and we check to see if the payment's been paid and we use that invoice API key again and then that returns the data status which is either paid or unpaid, I believe. Yes, it is. So now we enter into this while loop. So we set account, the count, uh, a variable called counter, we set that um, to zero uh, and then, where's that? I think that's set to zero, yeah, that's set to zero up there. In fact, if I move that from there, it's down there. I can get rid of that there then. Okay, sorry. 
Um, so counter the in, in, an integer called counter is equal to zero. So while counter is under a thousand, run this uh, while loop. So the first thing it says if data status is unpaid. So we just checked uh, in check payment ID. If it's unpaid, wait 300 milliseconds and then check to see if it's paid again. Add one onto counter. So it's going to keep doing this and adding one onto the counter. And eventually, after a thousand times, it will um, time out and then run this whole thing again. Go get, go fetch a new invoice. Otherwise, if uh, data status equals paid, so i.e. someone's paid the invoice, it displays the splash screen again. So we've got something to look at. It turns on our pin 21 for 15 seconds. Um, for me, that's 15 seconds because it's my Jacob's Ladder and I want to see those arcs. When I did it for the um, a similar project for the arcade machines, it was 200 milliseconds. Anything more it would register as multiple credits on the arcade. So that's really dependent upon the project you're using this for. Um, and then we wait a second, we, uh, we set counter to a thousand, so that breaks that while loop, which means we loop around and fetch a new payment. So if it's been paid, uh, display the splash screen, turn the thing on for 15 seconds, and then once it's done that, go and get a new invoice and then display a new invoice. And it's that easy as that. Um, plug in the M5 stack, hit on the upload uh, button, it'll upload the project onto the M5 stack and you should be good to go.